if it's in the San Antonio area and we look at Rouse out of that location and what it does is it says what is what are your competitors within that geographic area that have like products renting the equipment for day week and month and so basically it sets up a benchmark and we make the choice based on our own uh, utilization of equipment on whether or not we're going to be below bench at bench or above bench welcome to peer talk a dialogue with business owners just like you Peer Talk conversations run the gamut of business challenges facing owners today. The host of Peer Talk is Dan Crowley, founder and owner of Peer Executive Groups, which provides a safe space for owners to share their experience, grow their businesses, and learn from their peers. Okay, welcome to Peer Talk. There are a number of great business owners out there, just like yourself, who would love to share their experiences with you, and we hope to give them a voice. Today's Peer Talk episode is sponsored by Rouse Analytics the rental industry's exclusive source for benchmark rate and utilization data. You make critical purchasing, sale, and pricing decisions every day that affect your profitability. Accurate, actionable information from Rouse empowers you to make those decisions with confidence. Welcome to Peer Talk. Our guest today is Leonard Cedillo from Tejas Equipment Rentals in South Texas. Leonard previously was at Texas First Rental, Uh, Even prior to that, he was at Blue Line Rental, and that was uh, before it was acquired by Volvo. He was able to work in Salt Lake City, Utah, New Mexico, and again, back now in Texas with Matt Musgrove from Tejas Equipment Rentals. They have 11 locations, seven are tool and equipment, three are site service, and one is events. So there's a number of branch managers that Leonard must interact with. Let's hear what Leonard has to say about establishing rental rates across branches, as well as benchmarking and new technologies. Welcome everyone to Peer Talk. This is Dan Crowley, your host. And today I'm very excited to have Leonard Cedillo here from Tejas Equipment Rentals. But uh, today is an interesting um, uh, episode because we're going to be talking about uh, everything from how we establish pricing uh, rates on equipment, how we, if we have multi-site, how those locations might communicate with each other around those topics. Uh, we might also look at some used equipment pricing um, and talk about uh, just operational benchmarking. So a little bit of everything. Uh, obviously, our sponsor today is Rouse Analytics. You heard a little blurb on that early on. And uh, Leonard, welcome to the show. Well, thank you. Um, we're gonna, Let's start our conversation just hearing a little bit about your personal journey. I think uh, you had recently joined a peer group, and uh, one of the most interesting parts of that meeting was you talking through your beginnings. So why don't you tell us a little bit how you grew up in the industry? Sure. Well, I started out in the rental business in um, 1981. I owned um, um, an equipment rental company, didn't really know what I was doing. Um, uh, this was in the early 80s, and it uh, it went south on me. Uh, the the recession of the 80s got me. Um, I then went to work for a regional company, um, uh, one of the ARE industry leaders, Hotch Manning, uh, A1 Rental Center in Las Cruces, New Mexico, and uh, started out there. And that's really where my education uh, started in, in the rental business. Um, I did that um, up to the point of um, him selling to the very first consolidator. In the business, it was Rentex, and uh, the roll-up was uh, the model was a smaller uh, equipment rental uh, offerings and roll-up across the United States. Worked my way up into um, uh, Eastern Region Director, responsible for the half uh, half of the United States. Did that up and up to the point where they sold multiple times, and you know I uh, grabbed a parachute and went to work for a VC group that did a startup in Salt Lake City, Utah, and uh, went to work for them. And we took, uh, we took it from seven tool and equipment uh, rental locations to, to uh, 20 locations, some that we merged in with others, some that we acquired and closed uh, to gain market share. Uh, did that up until uh, 
uh, the other recession, um, ended up going back to New Mexico, working for a good friend of mine uh, that had uh, multiple locations in southern New Mexico, back to my roots, and uh, did that. He wanted to use the same model that we used in Utah, and that is uh, you're going to grow and expand and uh, gain market share. And uh, right about the time we were in the midst of doing that, um, the consolidator came in and acquired uh, his company, his assets. Um, I did that for a little while. It was uh, really not a lot of fun. Had the opportunity to uh, move to Texas and do um, a startup uh, locations for um, the Caterpillar dealership in Texas and did that up until the point where I was uh, really uh, on the downhill side of my career and decided I wanted to go back to my original roots, which was a, a, a smaller regional company that uh, uh, that was a sole proprietorship. And uh, so here I am at here at uh, Tejas Equipment Rental and uh, really, really enjoying life now. Back to my roots. There you go. Excellent. And Tejas, uh, fascinating story in its own right. Um, been around for 45 years now. Uh, up to 11 locations. Why don't you tell us about where those locations are and also um, the types of locations? Sure. So we have a total of 11 locations, uh, seven tool and equipment rental locations, uh, three site services locations that are uh, temporary fencing and portable toilets, and then one small uh, tent and event uh, business segment. We have four in what we call the central part of Texas, which is San Antonio and uh, New Braunfels and also San Marcos. And then uh, we have uh, the balance of the facility seven in South Texas, which is Brownsville, Harlingen, um, Edinburgh and McAllen. And of course, a uh, quick shout out to Matt Musgrove, the owner of Tejas. Thank you for allowing us to have Leonard for a little bit here, uh, right after the holiday season. It's always the busiest week, usually getting back into the into the fray here. So, um, you know, uh, Matt has been a uh, a regular Top Gun Award winner inside of peer groups for the last few years. How, tell us a little bit about um, how your roles differ um, inside of the company. Sure. Well, you know, uh, Matt operates at the at the highest of levels, um, um, and myself, um, I'm the uh, general manager responsible for the day to day operations of all of the, eleven of the locations. And you know, I'm in a branch um, every day, five days a week. Uh, every other week, um, you know, I'm either in the Rio Grande Valley or uh, up here in uh, Central Texas, the San Antonio area. Okay. And, and so what, how would you describe your technology solutions right now? You are, uh, you guys are point of rental users. Is that correct? Yeah, we are point of rental users. And I'd like to say that we're on the cutting edge of technology. You know, we have, um, we have, uh, of course, Rouse, um, that's a part of our day-to-day, -day, um, um, usage. Uh, we use uh, Slack as a communicator, between all of our locations, between regions. Um, we also have uh, Salesforce that we have integrated with the software. <coughs> Excuse me. And so, yeah, that's kind of the, <coughs> my goodness. So Sorry you, about that. No, that's fine. So, so it's interesting. You mentioned Slack. Uh, for those of you who don't know Slack, it's a great communication tool for, um, by top really. So you can identify uh, specific lines of discussion. And uh, especially, I would say, inside an organization, that would be very useful um, for what you guys are doing. And then um, you had mentioned um, uh, that you use Salesforce. Tell us what that looks like in, as it compares to your, obviously, point of rental operations um, database. Sure. Well, you know, um, we've experienced you know, success, extreme success in the last several years. And, you know, a lot of our success we can attribute to the use of Rouse. And, you know, anytime I ever talk about Rouse, uh, my comment is, you know, if you're just, if you're quoting rates out of your rental software, you're missing rentals. So the beauty of Rouse is 
it takes a look at <coughs> rates uh, within a geographic area. So for example, um, if it's uh, in the San Antonio area and we look at Rouse out of that location and what it does is it says, what is what are your competitors within that geographic area that have like products renting the equipment for day, week, and month? And so basically it sets up a benchmark and we make the choice based on our own uh, utilization of the equipment on whether or not we're gonna be below bench, at bench, or above bench. So really it's, uh, you know, it's a tool that's in the tool chest that we use day in and day out, and it drives our rentals, it drives our utilization. You know, we make the choice, uh, you know, what rate we're going to use. And the beauty of it is it's it's based on geographic area. So the rate, so the benchmark for a certain item in San Antonio may be lower than a benchmark for one of our outlying stores, like maybe Brownsville, Texas, which is, you know, uh, 380 miles away. So you know, they may be quoting higher rates using bench. And so, you know, it basically it basically says, what are the rates for any item within that geographic area? Got it, that's awesome. And so how, I guess me not being from a uh, store environment, um, what's the conf confidence level comfort with uh, a store manager making certain decisions without uh, do, do they? I guess is that what Rouse does? Is it helps them to feel confident and comfortable going forward to not necessarily give Matt a call or Leonard a call to resolve uh, some some you know contract discussions about uh, bringing you know doing certain deals or whatever it might be. Well, we have a lot of confidence in in Rouse, the software, of course, because it uses it uses real data. So you know it's. It's not like it's saying, you know, what is your book rate? And that's what you rent it for. So the beauty of Rouse is it takes a look at every single closed invoice for that particular item. An example would be like a backhoe. What did that backhoe rent out for actual per month? And it'll, it'll give you the total rental dollar rental amount. So that's where the tire hits the pavement. That's the reality of Rouse is it's real data and it's, and it's looking for um backhoe rentals for a month within that geographic area so we have tremendous confidence in in the rates that we're quoting it's our choice whether we want to be below bench at bench or above bench if if it's a super highly highly utilized um item let's just say that it's a track skid steer then we may choose to be you know at our book rate and so you know that's our choice um and, you know, so it's a lot of education. It's something that I manage and monitor really daily to make sure that we're using Rouse. I have reports that Rouse generates that tells me, you know, what location is doing what in terms of discount to, to bench. So I can tell who's using it, and who's not using it. And then there's a direct correlation between usage and revenue and utilization. So, you know, when a branch is rocking and rolling, I can see what they're doing. Um, but based on on the data that's pulled from Rouse. Okay, fascinating. So that's interesting. So you so you really get a good sense of utilization of the tool, um, which is not something I was aware of. Which I think obviously that's great, especially for multi site. My goodness, that would absolutely be helpful uh, to know that you're getting your value out of it. Um, and then from the perspective of you know, the information that you're getting from Rouse, you're seeing the benchmark data. You're also, um, there's APIs hooked up to point of rental and you're pulling down uh, some, what I would call management, almost management reporting information as well. Is that correct? So you, you kind of have comfort in knowing physical utilization on certain assets and having those conversations with the branch manager and stuff. Absolutely. Yeah. In fact, we have uh, weekly region meetings and then we have a, senior management meeting and you know it's it's an agenda item rouse and the rouse data we review it um and it drills down i mean you can drill down all the way to to a single asset um it there's a lot of information that lives in rouse uh sales rep data you know what sales reps are discounting the most and you know it's uh, it's really really good information and like i said 
it takes the guesswork out of where do you think we need to be? Because if, if by chance I have a, a, a manager or an ISR call me up and they say, you know, hey, I've got an opportunity to rent uh, a backhoe for a month. I need to be competitive. The very first words out of my mouth will be, what did Rouse tell you to do? In fact, I did have that conversation today with one of the one of the branch managers. So, you know, it's all it's all based on on where is where are we at today? And and from that perspective, like I and I don't know uh, what other similarities would be out there compared to a Rouse analytics relationship set slash product. But that being said, you know, you need to know that you're getting a return on that investment and that, you know, it's making you money and not costing you money to be a Rouse user, right? So um, you guys feel pretty confident with that, correct? Oh, absolutely, 100%. I mean, our our growth, you know, we can attribute um, a sizable amount uh, coming from uh, the usage of Rouse usage. Well, and I know, uh, you know, we see inside Top Gun, Top Gun is the top 25% of submitted financials uh, in any given year. And of course, we're starting a new year year here soon. So we're going to have the uh, input forms go out to, to the troops. Um, but I will say that uh, the majority of those that end up in Top Gun seem to be really on top of their um, rates and really knowing, you know, how they're going to go about fluctuating rates and or what how they're going to set rates. Um, a lot of it does relate to the, I would say, the education and the knowledge of a store manager or branch uh, or um, district manager to really be on top of understanding physical utilization and, like you stated, the uh, category of asset that you're looking at. Is that similar with you guys? Same thing. Oh, absolutely. I mean, it's it's like I said, it's all it's all analytics and. You know, and it's all it's all fact based decisions. So an example would be, you know, if we look at benchmark on, uh, let's just say, rubber tired uh, skid steers and we say, wow, you know, we have we're very low utilization on them right now. Let's get aggressive. And we may go in at, you know, anywhere, you know, up to 15 percent below Rouse uh, to get the equipment out. And when it's out on rent, it's generating revenue and it increases your utilization. Well, that's good. Now, let me let me pivot slightly. So I do want to talk about the uh, peer group operational dashboard report that we recently uh, have established with Rouse and pulled out. But before we do that, um, what about um, used equipment pricing? Have you been involved in using Rouse or anything related to that or not really part of operations at this point? No, we really don't. I mean, our focus is on rentals and it's and it's and it's 99.99 percent rental i don't want um our sales rep isrs or osrs to uh spend time chasing uh something that we're not good at and that's you know equipment sales we're good at equipment rentals but we're not good at equipment sales uh, don't get me wrong if we have an opportunity to sell an asset you know i don't want them to spend any time on it uh, give it to me and uh you know we'll get it into the hands of the right person and we'll make the sale we recently sold a 26 foot scissor lift um, for about 20% more than acquisition cost. And the unit was probably uh, three or four months old. So, you know, it was, a, it was a very good deal. We don't walk away from them, but I, I don't want our teams to focus on sales. I want them to focus 100% on getting equipment on rent. Okay, perfect. And then, you know, moving over to that operational uh, benchmarks um, piece, you and I spoke briefly prior to this uh, about that you have a management report, you pull up um, and you're able to look at a lot of this data. Um, the, the main difference with the peer group operational dashboard is we just add in that 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 additional benchmark of uh, a peer group. Um, you know, we have 10 members and seven of them use uh, Rouse were able to pull that and look at it and say, okay, here's what's happening with me. And then in the context of the people in the room, it allows them to have a dialogue around, you know, year over year rate of change uh, on the pricing uh, price points. 
Um, and then obviously we've moved and transitioned to talk more and more about assets operationally and asset categories and physical utilization versus financial utilization. You, you have said that you've used this um, almost like a, um, or this type of data, you've used it to review with your branch managers. Is that correct? Absolutely. It's something that we look at once a week. And, you know, there's a direct correlation between physical utilization and financial utilization. There's also uh, also a fine line. So for us, you know, uh, what we've noticed is, well, also, you know, a, a side note would be, you know, it's benchmarked. And so you can see what the industry, the geographic industry average is, and that is the benchmark. So you can see, you know, what you're doing right, maybe and what you're doing wrong. So you know, the objective is to, if you're below it, you want to close the gap. If you're above it, you want to, you want to keep at it. As long as your physical utilization is up there and your financial utilization is, is higher then you know, that's the ultimate goal. So, you know, when we started using the routes tool, you know, there was a pretty, pretty good size gap. And since we manage it so closely and so tightly, and we give um, our teams, uh, the uh, the ability to make those kinds of decisions based on Rouse data, then you know it's um, we've watched the gap start to, to start to really get closer, inches away from passing them, and that's tough to do because you know the nationals are uh, very aggressive and they use the same tools. It, it's it's probably Rouse. If it's not Rouse, it's something that they've integrated into their system that makes those decisions for them. Got it. Okay. And, and I, you know, you, you obviously we, we like to talk about uh, the assets in the fleet and days in fleet, days on rent. Uh, but then there are also, um, I would say, choices that uh, a company will make related to credits and discounts, uh, related to um, damage waiver. Um, and do you use that to kind of look across your locations, obviously seven tool locations? Um, to kind of say, hey, we have an outlier here. What's going on down in that market? Well, you know, uh, once again, you know, our focus, my focus operational is what is it that the, the team, the branch has control over? And, you know, so there's not a huge focus on damage waiver, um, you know, because it's something that's not within their control. If they provide a COI, then, you know, then we don't collect the damage waiver. If they don't have one, then we do. So, you know, but it's not within their control. It's for me, it's about, you know, 100% focus on rental revenue um, and little to no focus on everything else. Well, I can see, how, I can see how, you know, having seven to keep an eye on, uh, it's important to know this is probably something you use to kind of get a sense of the personality of that particular location. You came on to the company did, is that is that what I, helped you to really understand that site versus another site to get an idea of the personality of that site? Well, you know, it's, um, you know, once again, you know, the beauty of Rouse is, uh, is it takes the personality out of it. You know, um, yes, of course, there's interactions. We have to we have to make the deal and we have to be do our jobs and be pleasant and provide that great customer service and you know, on-time delivery and all the stuff that goes along with it. But, you know, once again, you know, Rouse, Rouse makes our job easy because, you know, it puts us at a competitive edge and then the rest, the rest of the, the chips fall into place. What, what do you see, you know, last question, we'll wrap it up after this, but I'm just curious if you had any thoughts about the future. Um, you know, you and I are both getting older here. <laughs> one year, three year, five year, what's, what do you, What's going to happen to uh, equipment rental with, uh, you know, the changes that have been taking place over the last year or two? Well, you know, I mean, you know, any, th these days, if you're not using technology to help you make decisions, then then you're behind the eight ball. So, you know, the future is in technology. You know, um, so much of, of this stuff is uh, is, you know, through the Internet and through through algorithms and data, you know, that's the future. You know, I think that the future is locations will be responsible for uh, the logistics part of it. You know, the ready to rent equipment, 
the um, the on time delivery and pickup, uh, the correct billing, all those things. The rest of it, you know, is um, will be decided by, you know, that computer chip. Wow, that's awesome. You know, I I I didn't really think of it like that, but now that you mention it, I could see where um, this allows uh, somebody like Tejas to who really has a couple regional markets really under their belt. You guys can explode with some growth um, as much as you want to based on your commitment to uh, a certain mantra and a certain uh, focus going forward, which, you know, it's is data might be the key. So uh, appreciate that. Um, so anything on the horizon in the next 12 months for Tejas, you guys can just hit it hard and, you know, continue to see some growth this year, you think? Well, you know, um, Texas uh, got the double whammy. We had the crash in the oil and then we had COVID. And, you know, I think the, 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 the future is bright once we get over this COVID hump. And, you know, we uh, get all these municipalities and, you know, all the infrastructure growth that comes along with everything. We get oil to bounce back up. You know, I think the future is bright. Um, you know, I think uh, for us, you know, our focus will continue to to be, um, you know, keep, you know, keep our, our, our gears oiled well and continue to get better and keep communicating and making sure that we're providing the great customer service. And, and so that's the focus for us, you know, the communications and uh, the use of the software and, and Salesforce. Uh, once again, Salesforce makes decisions for us. It tells us where we should be and when we should be there and what we haven't done. So once again, it's all technology driven and, I think the future is bright. I think that we uh, we can pit ourselves up against uh, you know any company in uh, the markets that we're at. Excellent. Well, Leonard Cedillo, uh Tejas Equipment Rentals, thank you so much for joining us today on the show. Well, my pleasure. Today's Fear Talk episode is sponsored by Rouse Analytics, the rental industry's exclusive source for benchmark rate and utilization data. You make critical purchasing, sale, and pricing decisions every day that affect your profitability. Accurate, actionable information from Rouse empowers you to make those decisions with confidence. You've been listening to Peer Talk from Peer Executive Groups, produced and directed by Noah Crowley and hosted by Dan Crowley. Subscribe to this podcast for notifications of future episodes of Peer Talk.